Hey, this is Kenneth, and today let's talk about radio repeaters. Radio repeaters are pieces of equipment that I use quite a bit. They're used in amateur radio, uh, land mobile radio, so police departments, fire departments tend to use them. A lot of licensed commercial users will use them. Um, and there tends to be a lot of confusion as to really exactly what they are, why you want to have them, and how to use them, and which is particularly relevant for amateur radio operators because if you go into a new area, um, you need to figure out how to use the local repeaters if you want to. So let's first talk about what a repeater does and how it improves on the alternatives. So let's say we've got ourselves a little little land here. Here's a couple of buildings. You know, they're pretty fancy little buildings. And here is you. All right. So let's say that you're this little user. You've got some sort of small radio. You know, a possibility would be like a handheld radio, like a like this, um, and you want to talk to one of your friends, right? If your if your friend was, you know, right next to you, so like right next to this bu building right here, um, you could probably talk to each other directly, and that's called simplex radio, right? So that's simplex. Simplex is relatively easy because all you have to do is have two people on the same frequency, one of them transmits, the other one hears you. And then you can transmit back and talk back to the first guy. Um, this is what family radio service or FRS radios that you can buy at like Fry's operate on. And that's why they have relatively limited range, right? If you had someone over here on the other side of several of these buildings, here's some more buildings. Uh, these are skyscrapers, you know, not drawn to scale. Um, if this is you, you likely couldn't talk to this person on the other side of town just because there's a bunch of buildings in the way. The, the classic example that people also use is um, mountains. Mountains tend to be very problematic for radios. And so if there was an entire mountain and you were trying to talk to someone on this side, uh, you don't stand a chance with simplex radio. And that's where repeaters really uh, come, come to light as a, a useful response because what repeaters do is literally what they're called. They repeat what they hear. All right, and so if we were to put a repeater here, right, so up on the very top of this mountain, we put a repeater, and what it does is it, all day and all night, listens on one frequency, which is called its input frequency, and it retransmits out on its output frequency. So if you were to transmit here and go up to the repeater, the repeater would rehear you and would transmit in every direction. The advantage here is that the transmitter will likely be transmitting with more power than you have. It will be transmitting to a better antenna than you have. It'll be transmitting from a much better location than you have, right? You can be down anywhere in the city and look up and be able to see this repeater. And this repeater can then look down and see all of the different users that you want to talk to, right? So when you transmit up to it, it retransmits it and your buddy over here can hear it. Once you stop transmitting and the repeater shuts down, your buddy can then start transmitting. The repeater will hear it and repeat it back to you. Uh, the, the concept can be taken ad nauseum to what are called large linked systems, but that's beyond the scope of this first talk. So let's just talk about how you do this, right? And so what we have, clearly there's two frequencies involved with this repeater, one that it listens on and one that it transmits on. Um, these are called the uplink and downlink frequencies, or a dozen different other names. Um, but clearly you need both of these frequencies when you want to use a repeater, because you need to know which frequency to transmit on, and which ones to listen for everyone else using it on. Um, this is not how repeaters actually are typically talked about. What they talk about would be the downlink frequency, the one that you listen on, and the offset, right? And so f as a specific example, um, I am a maintainer of the W6TDM. I'm one of their admins for the W6TDM repeater. It's a UHF repeater that it transmits on 440.150 megahertz. It's in Cupertino in the South Bay in the Silicon Valley. If you happen to be in the area, 
Um, you'll often hear me on it when I'm sitting around in my apartment or driving. But the main thing is it transmits on 440.150 megahertz, which is the downlink, right? So if someone were to ask, what frequency is this repeater on? I would say 440.150 megahertz. But that's not enough, because if you want to actually talk into the repeater and have everyone else hear you, you need to know what its uplink frequency, or the one that it's listening on, is. Um, what I would instead tell you is that the offset is plus 5 megahertz. Um, this is because when you enter it in your radio, the radios actually expect to get the downlink frequency and the offset, so if I were to really, if I were to tell you that the uplink frequency is 445.150 megahertz, that would really just kind of be inconvenient for you because you would have to do back calculate the math. Um, you'll notice that hams, in particular, will often not tell you that it's plus five megahertz. They will just tell you it is a positive offset, as opposed to a negative offset, which is the other option. Um, this is because on the UHF band. You know, this is the 440 megahertz amateur band. Um, the offset tends to almost always be 5 megahertz. Uh, so that's on UHF. Well, let's go over here. So UHF, the offset tends to be 5 megahertz, either up or down. Um, this is opposed to like VHF. Which is also called, you know, two meter, the two meter band. This is the 144 megahertz band. Um, the problem with the VHF two meter band is it doesn't even have five megahertz of bandwidth. It goes from 144 to 148 in the U.S. Um, that's only four megahertz, and so they have to use a narrower offset, which happens to be 600 kilohertz. And these are numbers that you're just kind of expected to know. Um, most good radios are actually smart enough to just so if you tell it a positive or a negative offset, it will know to go 600 kilohertz if you tune in a VHF frequency, and 5 megahertz if you tune in a UHF frequency. Uh, these numbers proportionally grow and shrink. I think it's, off the top of my head, I want to say it's 500 kilohertz for the 6 meter band, and like 12.5 or 25 megahertz once you get up into the gigahertz range. Um, but for UHF, which is kind of my bread and butter, and all the repeaters I work on, it's five megahertz. So the offset is plus five megahertz. And so what this means is that on your radio, you would key in 440.150, and then you would tell it, I have a positive five megahertz offset. So that the radio would read out 440.150, and as soon as you push the push to talk button on the side of your radio, it would jump from 440 to 445. As soon as you release it, it would jump back from 445 back to 440 so that you could hear anyone responding to you, right? And so this arrow right here is at 445.150 megahertz, right? So you're transmitting on one frequency, the repeater listens to you on the uplink frequency, and retransmits it on the downlink frequency, which is this far apart uh, away from the down, you know, from the uplink. This is rarely the, the all that you need. You often also need what's called the CTCSS or PL or tone or privacy tone or DCS, um, which are all essentially a very a lot of different ways to say you need this some sort of access code. Um, a password is kind of a strong strong phrase for it. It's more of a it's a it, what it technically is is a, some sort of squelch code to really reassure the repeater that what it's hearing, which will not just be you, and not just the people that want to use it, but a whole bunch of people because it tends to be on the top of very high places. You want to reassure the repeater that yes, I really do want you to repeat me. Um, and so, on the receiver of the repeater, it's not only listening for you to be transmitting, it's listening for you to be transmitting with one of these access codes. Um, in the example of the W6 TDM repeater, it happens to be 100 hertz. And so what this, what this means is if you program your radio to have a PL tone of 100 hertz, 
whenever you are transmitting, it is very quietly playing a 100 hertz tone underneath what you're saying. You typically can't hear it unless your radio is configured incorrectly, um, but the repeater can hear it and goes, ah, this wh whoever is transmitting right now is transmitting with a 100 hertz PL or CTCSS or tone or privacy tone, whatever you want to call it. Clearly they want to go through me as a repeater and it will then key up its transmitter and start routing audio. Um, the P the the 100 hertz is because this happens to be an analog system, so uh, or you know an analog squelch code, which is why it's, it uses CTCSS. Um, you also see some that would have numbers like 67, or I guess 63 is a common one. Um, it's just a, a two or three digit number, and the, those are called digital squelch codes, um, or digital coded squelch. I don't know. It, it's very, very rare um, in amateur radio to see DCS repeaters. I use them myself when I'm setting up commercial repeaters, but you know, you could see either, technically. Most hams expect the analog uh, PL or CTCSS tones merely because hams are a little bit backwards and this concept of a digital coded squelch is too hard for them. So that's about it. You, you transmit on the uplink frequency, which no one ever actually gives you, because you have to do the math given the downlink frequency that you listen on, which you're going to spend most of your time listening, hopefully. If you, if you spend more time transmitting to a repeater than listening, um, no one else will probably want to talk to you, and you wouldn't be giving them a chance. Um, but you, you'd need the downlink frequency, the offset, and the CTCSS. Um, Exactly how this is implemented as far as the repeater, that's a whole nother kettle of fish, which I'll get into later. Um, but for now, if you go into a new, to new town and you ask your, your buddy there, hey, what repeater do you want to use when you're driving around? And he gives you a downlink frequency, a positive or a negative offset, and a PL tone. Those are the three numbers, and that's what they do. So hopefully you'll have a little bit better understanding uh, the next time you want to program in a repeater and what those numbers really mean. Thanks for watching. This has been Kenneth.